the regulatory framework or apparatus for the financial sector in India broadly consists of the Ministry of Finance of the Government of India which administers the Companies Act 1956 and the Securities Contracts Regulation Act 1956. The Reserve Bank of India and the Board of Financial Supervision that is BFS under its aegis. The Securities and Exchange Board of India that is SEBI, Insurance Regulatory Authority, the governing body of various stock exchanges and the apex financial institutions such as the IDBI, SIDB, NHB, NCB. Among these, the RBI and SEBI have special role and responsibility. The Reserve Bank of India as the central bank of the country is the center of Indian financial and monetary system. As the epic institution, it has been guiding, monitoring, regulating, controlling and promoting the destiny of the Indian financial system since its inception. It is quite young compared with such central banks as the Bank of England, Riks Bank of Sweden and the Federal Reserve Board of United States of America. It is perhaps the oldest among the central banks in the developing countries. It started functioning from April 1, 1935 on the terms of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. It was a private shareholders institution till January 1949, after which it became a state-owned institution under the Reserve Bank Transferred to Public Ownership of India Act 1948. This act empowers the central government in cons consultation with the governor of the bank to issue such directions to it as they might consider necessary in the public interest. Further, the governor and all the deputy governors of the bank are appointed by the central government. The internal organizational setup of the bank has been modified and expanded from time to time in order to cope with the increasing volume and range of banks activities. After studying this module, you will understand the role and the functions of the RBI and the RBI's role with respect to the government as well as its impact with regard to foreign exchange control. The Reserve Bank of India, as the central bank of the country, is the center of the Indian financial and monetary system. It started functioning from April 1, 1935 on the terms of the Reserve Bank of India Act. The bank's role and functions have undergone numerous changes as the nature of the Indian economy and financial sector changed. The final control of the bank vests in the central board which comprises the board of directors, the governor, four deputy governors and 15 directors nominated by the central government. RBI functions within the framework of a mixed economic system. With regards to framing various policies, it is necessary to maintain 
close and continuous collaboration between the government and the RBI. In the event of a difference of opinion or conflict, the government view or position can always be expected to prevail. Let us discuss the main functions of the Reserve Bank of India. The first function of the RBI is to maintain monetary stability so that the business and economic life can deliver welfare gains of a properly functioning mixed economy. The second function is to maintain financial stability and sound financial institutions so that monetary stability can be safely pursued. The third function is to maintain stable payment systems so that financial transactions can be safely and efficiently executed. The next function of the RBI is to promote the development of financial infrastructure of markets and systems and to enable it to operate efficiently and to ensure that credit allocation by the financial system broadly reflects the national economic priorities and societal concerns. Lastly, the RBI regulates the overall volume of money and credit in the economy with an aim to ensure a reasonable degree of price stability. The roles of the Reserve Bank of India are issuer of currency, government banker, ways and means advances, overdrafts, banker's bank, supervising authority, exchange control authority, exchange control in terms of FERA and FEMA and promotional functions. Let us discuss the roles of the RBI in detail. The Reserve Bank is the nation's sole note issuing authority. Along with the Government of India, the RBI is responsible for the design and production and overall management of the nation's currency with the goal of ensuring an adequate supply of clean money. The Reserve Bank also makes sure there is an adequate supply of genuine notes and coins produced by the government. In consultation with the government, they routinely address security issues and target ways to enhance security features to reduce the risk of counterfeiting. The responsibility of the bank is not only to put currency into or withdraw it from circulation, but also to exchange notes and coins of one denomination into those of other denominations as demanded by the public. All affairs of the bank relating to note issue are conducted through the issue department. The bank can issue notes against the security of gold coins and gold bullion, foreign securities, rupee coin, government of India securities and such bills of exchange and promissory notes as are eligible for purchase by the bank. Till 1956, not less than 40% of the assets was to consist of gold coin and bullion and sterling or foreign securities. In other words, the proportional reserve system of note issue existed in India till 1956. Thereafter, the system was abandoned and a minimum value of gold coin and bullion and foreign securities as a part of total approved assets came to be adopted as a cover for note issue. Managing the government's banking transactions is a key RBI role. It provides the government with all banking services like acceptance of deposits, withdrawal of funds by checks, 
making payments as well as receipts and collection of payments on behalf of the government. The deficit or surplus in the central government account with the RBI is managed by the creation and cancellation of treasury bills known as ad hoc treasury bills. Now let us discuss ways and means of advances. These are the temporary advances made in order to bridge the temporary gap between receipts and payments to both the central and state governments. The maximum maturity period of these advances is three months. In practice, the gap between receipts and payments in respect of the central government used to be met by the issue of ad hoc treasury bills, while the one in respect of the state governments is met by the ways and means advances. Under Ways and Means Advances, or WMA, the RBI gives ways and means advances to the central government in mutually agreed amounts at market-related interest rates. The system of ways and means of advances in the place of that of issuing ad hoc treasury bills has been regarded as a significant development in the direction of a desirable and better fiscal policy and monetary policy coordination. The accord between the RBI and the government reached in 1994 eliminated the automatic monetization of the central government fiscal deficit through the issue of ad hoc treasury bills by April 1997. Under Ways and Means Advances, that is WMA, the RBI gives Ways and Means Advances to the central government in mutually agreed amounts at market-related interest rates. Under this system, since the RBI has the right to trigger flotation of fresh government loans as and when the actual utilization of WMA crosses 75% of the limit, the WMA does not acquire the cumulative character of the ad hoc. Thus, the RBI can now accommodate the government at its discretion and can impose market discipline on fiscal profligacy. However, the new system notwithstanding, the fiscal dominance has continued to persist as reflected in the growing value of government borrowings. Apart from the ways and means advances, the state governments have made heavy use of overdrafts from the RBI in excess of the credit limited limits granted by the RBI. In other words, overdrafts are unauthorized ways and means advances drawn by the state government on the RBI. Overdrafts are unauthorized ways and means advances drawn by the state government on the RBI. At present, overdrafts up to and inclusive of the seventh day are charged at the bank rate and from the eighth day onwards at 3% above the bank rate. The management of the state's overdraft has gradually become one of the major responsibilities of the RBI on account of the persistence of large proportions of those overdrafts. The bank charges a commission from the governments for rendering this service. Like individual consumers and organizations of all kinds, banks need their own mechanism to transfer funds and settle interbank transactions such as borrowing from and lending to other banks and customer transactions. As the banker to banks, the Reserve Bank fulfills this role.
The bank controls the volume of reserves of commercial banks and thereby determines the deposits and credit creating ability of the banks. In effect, all banks operating in the country have accounts with the Reserve Bank, just as individuals and businesses have accounts with their banks. The RBI has vast powers to supervise and control commercial and cooperative banks with a view to develop an adequate and sound banking system in the country. To conduct ad hoc investigations from time to time, look into complaints, irregularities and frauds in respect to banks to issue licenses for the establishment of new banks, to issue licenses for setting up a bank branch, to prescribe minimum requirement regarding paid up capital and reserves, transfer to reserve fund and maintenance of cash reserves and other liquid assets, to inspect banks in India as well as abroad, with regard to organization, investments, credit portfolio management, credit appraisal, region-wise performance, training, etc. To control methods of operation of banks so that they do not fritter away funds in improper investments and in judicious advances. To control appointment, reappointment, termination of appointment of the chairman and chief executive officers of private sector banks to approve or force amalgamations. In keeping with the recommendation of Narasimha Committee 1991, the RBI function of bank supervision was separated from its traditional central banking functions by the creation of a separate department of supervision called DOS. From 22nd November 1993. The Board of Financial Supervision, that is BFS, was set up on 16th November 1994 under the aegis of the RBI to oversee the Indian financial system, that is IFS. But in spite of the above, it has been found that Quite often, the Department of Supervision, that is DOS, does not take action on inspection reports that banks continue to repeat their mistakes and that they continue to lend to defaulting parties even when they are blacklisted. In recent years, with increasing integration of the Indian economy with the global economy, arising from greater trade and capital flows. The foreign exchange market has evolved as a key segment of the Indian financial market. The RBI pursues this objective through its domestic policies and the regulation of the foreign exchange market. The task of the RBI has the following dimensions. To administer the foreign exchange control, to choose the exchange rate system and fix or manage the exchange rate between the rupee and other currencies, to manage exchange reserves, and to interact or negotiate with the monetary authorities of the Sterling Area, Asian Clearing Union, and other countries, and with international financial institutions such as the IMF, World Bank, and Asian Development Bank. The RBI administers the exchange control in terms of the Foreign Exchange Regulation Act, FERA, 1973, which has been replaced by the Foreign Exchange Management Act, FEMA. The function of the RBI is to develop and regulate the foreign exchange market. Its role is to facilitate external trade and payment and provide our orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market within the framework of FEMA. The RBI is a custodian of country's foreign exchange reserves. It is vested with the responsibility of managing the investment and utilization of the reserves in the most advantageous manner. Its role 
as the stabilizer of the foreign exchange market has become all the more important with the introduction of the floating exchange rate system and convertibility of the rupee on trade and current accounts. The RBI has the authority to enter into foreign exchange transactions both on its own account as well as on behalf of the government. It deals in foreign exchange transactions both on its own account as well as on behalf of the government. It deals in foreign exchange with the public through the authorized dealers. It supervises, monitors and controls the foreign exchange market with a view to creating an active market with wide participation by the authorized dealers and the exporters and importers so that the various currencies are actively traded facilitating customers to obtain fine quotations with rate variations being kept to the minimum. The objective of the RBI in respect of the foreign exchange foreign forward market is to make it a useful tool for covering all exchange risks of the importers and exporters. Its regulations aim at ensuring that the forward market facilities are need based and are not used for speculated purposes. The promotional developmental functions of the RBI refers to its efforts to strengthen the financial system. It has played a highly commendable role in diversifying the institutional structure of the financial system in India. Moreover, by providing concessional financial support to the various financial institutions, the RBI enabled the financial system to deploy resources in conformity with the planning priorities. With the exception of the SIDB and NABARD, concessional financing was phased out and the financial institutions geared up their resource mobilization strategies according to the capital market related arrangements. Moreover, by providing concessional financial support to the various financial institutions, the RBI enabled the financial system to deploy resources in conformity with the planning priorities. With the exception of the SIDB and NABARD, concessional financing was phased out and the financial institutions geared up their resource mobilization strategies according to the capital market related arrangements. In the post liberalization phase, the RBI has completely disassociated itself from the financial institutions. The liabilities of the issue department comprise the vault cash in the banking department and the notes issued to the public, banks and treasuries under Section 22 of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934. The assets eligible to back the issuance of notes under Section 33 include gold coin and bullion, eligible foreign securities, Government of India rupee securities, rupee coins and eligible internal bills of exchange and other commercial paper. As the Reserve Bank acts as the agent of the central government in the issue, distribution and handling of rupee and small coins under Section 38, inventories are held in the issue department. The balance sheet of the banking department reflects the Reserve Bank's functions as banker to the government and banks. The balance sheet effects of monetary policy actions 
in terms of changes in investments in government paper and foreign assets span both the issue and banking departments. Encumbered securities such as government securities accounted only in the investment portfolio of the banking department as they are not eligible for banking note issuance. Balances with the bank which is the principal foreign currency authority of the foreign country and other balances or securities maintained with or issued by the IMF, IBRD, IDA, IFC, ADB, BIS and other banking or financial institution notified by the central government in this behalf which is repayable with a period of 10 years. Before summarizing this module, let us have a look at the balance sheet of both issue and banking department. Table 1. Assets and liabilities of the issue department of the Reserve Bank of India. On the liability side, notes held in the banking department, bullion, notes in circulation, on the asset sites, gold coins held in India, held outside India, foreign securities, rupee coin, government of India securities, internal bills of exchange and other commercial papers. Total liabilities is equal to total notes issued which is equal to total assets. Table 2 Assets and Liabilities of the Banking Department of the Reserve Bank of India. We have two columns liabilities and assets. On the liability side, capital paid up, reserve fund, national industrial operation fund, long term fund abroad, national housing credit fund that is long term operations, deposits, one government, both central and state government, B banks which includes scheduled commercial banks, scheduled state cooperative banks, other scheduled cooperative banks, non-scheduled state cooperative banks, other banks. C. Others which includes bills payable in India and other liabilities, total liabilities. On the asset sites, we will have notes, rupee coins, small coin, bills purchased and discounted both internal, external and government treasury bills, balances held by the government, investments, loans and advances to central government, state governments, loans and advances to scheduled commercial banks, scheduled state cooperative banks, other scheduled cooperative banks, non-scheduled state cooperative banks and others. Loans, advances and investments, national industrial credit fund long term operations, loans and advances to industrial development bank of the state, export, import bank of India, industrial investment bank of India and others. Investments in bonds, debentures issued by industrial development bank of India, export 
import bank of india industrial investment bank of india and others loans advances and investments from national housing credit long term operation fund loans and advances to national housing bank investments in bonds debentures issued by the national housing bank other assets that is the total assets in this module we have learned about the important functions of rbi in detail which are maintaining monetary and financial stability in the economy promote development of financial infrastructure credit allocation by the financial system and regulate overall volume of money and credit in the economy we have also understood about the role of rbi that is note issuer of currency government banker bankers bank exchange control supervising authority promotional role and regulator of money and credit in addition to this we have also learned about the issue and banking department of rbi